Hi and welcome to this week's 10 questions in 10 minutes, an interview series co-produced with Magda Misim of Contemporary Digital Art and Super Air. I'm Stina Gustafsson, curator with Magda, and with us today we have Joshua Davis. Thanks for joining us, Joshua. Hello, hello everyone. Um, so before we kick off with the questions, I'm just going to introduce you shortly. Um, Joshua Davis is a designer, technologist, author and artist in algorithmic image making and animation and is acclaimed for his role in designing the visualization of IBM's Watson. He was the winner of the 2001 pre Electronica, a Golden Nika. His work has been exhibited in Tate Modern, the Design Museum in London, Le Centre Pompidou, the ICA, the Guggenheim Museum Bilbao, MoMA PS1 New York, the Whitney, the Cooper Hewitt, and Smith Smithsonian Design Museum, and many more. Thank you Gosh. so much for having 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 you. Yeah, it sounds it almost sounds like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so shall we get into the questions? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so first question. As mentioned in your bio, you seem to be having several roles within your professional life. Yeah. Um, designer, technologist author and artist. Do you identify more with any of one of these specific roles or do they all kind of inform your creative work? Yeah, no, I, I, I think I feel like I wear a lot of hats. You know, I, I, I started as a traditional painter. Um, I went to art school out here in New York. Um, that's where I'm at right now is New York. Um, I went to a school called Pratt and I studied painting. And so, you know, I, I, I've been an artist sort of all of my life, sort of always identified with expressing my feelings with shapes and colors. And, um, you know, it was, it was while at school, I learned about computers and technology and then started self teaching myself programming. And then I wrote a book about, um, the sort of tech. So I've sort of, you know, I still feel that I'm sort of this creative person, mm. but I get to wear a lot of uh, hats, you know, sometimes mm. I do stuff for brands. And so then I take on the role as, as designer. So no, I don't feel aligned with anyone in particular. I just feel like I'm Josh Davis every morning. That's great. That's perfect. <laughs> um, so second question, what process do you have when it comes to starting a new art piece? Yeah, so that is a great question because I, I feel like maybe sometimes I don't do what normal people do, which is, you know, I think most people sort of have a concept, they sort of have an idea and, you know, maybe they sketch that idea out and then they open them up whatever tools that they use to, to execute idea, and then they, they execute the idea and they, they have a piece of artwork. I do not do that. Um, I usually come into my studio here and um, I sort of maybe have like a seed idea, mm. and that's kind of the, the joy of, of working with programming is, is I'm you know writing programming, and, and that programming has a lot of algorithmic and naturalistic equations. And it usually means I'm surprised. So, you know, I'll start off with a seed idea and then that idea will branch. And then usually the patterns were so, will, will sort of reveal themselves. So um, I typically am all about the the journey and, but not necessarily the end destination. Mm -hmm. Question number three. Mm. What do you find to be the most giving in the process of creating your art? I think it's that surprise. Um, mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, is that this kind of randomness and surprise started actually in painting. Um, I joke that, you know, when I was doing oil painting, I, I would try like a lot of things. Like I would paint these canvases and I would roll them up and I would put them in my freezer. Um, mm -hmm. it, it just gets cold. <laughs> Uh, nothing, <laughs> nothing happens. But I was, I was, I was executing these sort of like random processes, and in some of my early analog work, I was actually baking them in the oven. And because I was using oil paint and resins, they would sort of dry at separate times, and it would cause the artwork to shatter. And so I, I liked that idea of like, okay, I've got a, a means to sort of execute something but you're going to be surprised because you don't know what the outcome is. And so, you know, I think that kind of folds into question two, which is, you know, a lot of times, you know, these, these programs that I'm writing here, you know, I may, you know, press a space bar on, uh, you know, one of my programs to sort of try something new. Mm -hmm. And then so sort of like, okay, well, what happens if I color it? And, you know, what happens if I, you know, do this? And then what happens if I do? And so I like the idea that there's sort of this, 
uh, surprise factor. And I think, mm. you know, people who are seeing my work for the first time, I'm also seeing it for the first time because, you know, there's that sort of, you know, happy birthday, you know, this is what we do now. <laughs> and so mm. I think for me, that's, that's kind of maybe the most gratifying about how I, you know, create my work. Mm. Um, has there been any point in your life where you've taken a big risk to move forward with your artistic career? Yeah. So I, I think the, the big risk for me was walking away from painting. Um, mm. You know, I had painted, you know, ever since I was 12, I, I think I was 12 when wow. I got my first oil painting set. <laughs> that's pretty, that's, yeah, pretty yeah, that's early. Yeah, I was, so I was 12 years old and I got my first oil painting set and, you know, my, my parents just didn't know, you know, they, they <laughs> you know, I, I, I'll be over in the corner with the turpentine. You know? You know. I was only allowed acrylic, <laughs> by the way. I was not allowed oil, oil colors at all. <laughs> yeah. So um, for me, I think that big leap was, was, like embracing technology. And mm. for me, you know, this, this transition was around 1994, 1995. Mm. Um, and I, I sort of made that jump where, you know, it's like, okay, well, I'm still a painter. Mm. Um, I'm just not going to use paint and brushes. I'm going to use computers and I'm going to use pixels and I'm going to use mm. monitors. Now you have to remember I'm old. I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to be 50 this year. And when I say, yeah, but when I say computers, I mean like my first computer, the monitor was just one color. It just did amber. <laughs> you know, it, you, you had the choice of amber or green kids. And then eventually, you know, we got 16 color video cards and then we got 256 color video cards. So for me, th that was like a tremendous leap of faith because um, I was walking away from, you know, being able to use paint and brushes and having millions mm. of colors mm. to this computer that, you know, again, my first computer only had an amber screen. So wow. for me, I felt like, how do I identify as a painter, but, but embrace technology? And it was a huge, it was a huge risk at that time. So this leads very nicely over to next question, which is what's the first that comes to mind when I say flash? <laughs> What's flash? <laughs> Good oh. question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's flash? What's flash? Uh, I hear flash is dead, which I'm it's yeah. fine. It's fine. Listen, flash was very good to me. I, I spent 15 years in flash. Um, you know, it, it was, it was the medium that I jumped to that, that springboarded, mm. you know, my, my career, but you know, one thing that I always disliked about Flash was I was, you know, that people who used it were always associated with its use. Mm. And, you know, like we never say like, oh, you know, that's a really great Photoshop gal or that's a really great illustrator guy. Like, mm. like Flash was always associated with its use. And mm. I think when you're a, a creative, um, you know, you want to be... Uh, you want to be a, a person about ideas and a person mm. about, you know, texture and color and transporting people places. And so I just always, I hated being associated um, um, with its use, mm -hmm. but however, I, you know, I spent 15 years in flash and then moved on to Java and now moving on to other things. So I'm grateful, but you know, time and, and space progresses. Where on the internet do you go to find inspiration? Oh, uh, nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. <laughs> no, uh, I think I, for me, uh, I think the internet is is like w one of the worst places to go for, for inspiration. Oh, really? um, oh yeah. It's just, you know, why, why, what I want to do that. Um, you know, the, the, the internet is, is a landscape where people are trying things and expressing themselves. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, why would I want to use the internet to, uh, to be a springboard for inspiration. I find a ton more inspiration, you know, playing video games or listening mm -hmm. to music or, mm -hmm. or going to concerts or watching film. I'd say the internet is the worst place to get inspiration from. That's a great answer. Though. I have to say that. You don't go to the internet to find inspiration. Um, on some platforms such as Super Rare, um, you use the name PlayStation. Um, <laughs> can you tell us the meaning behind it? 
Yeah, so uh, I think I bought PlayStation, the internet domain, back in 1996. <laughs> and I remember being so excited, like, oh, my God, I can't believe I got it. You know, but I could have had, like, <laughs> Coke.com. I could have had – I could have I could have made so much money buying and selling domains. But, uh, no, PlayStation. So the idea is, is video games. You know, I, my first uh, video game console, I think, was the Atari – 2600 and then eventually we got the commodore 64 mm. and uh was just always uh enamored with uh non-passive media so i've always loved video games because you know I've, i'm a big role-playing guy i'm not a first person shooter kind of person but um you know i love i love the idea of being a participant in a medium and so when i went to start my first you know, sort of alias and website, it was PlayStation, which I, I thought was just going to be a hilarious joke on misspelling PlayStation wrong. <laughs> and then the first project that we ever did on PlayStation was a, it was done in a uh, shockwave director, Macromedia director. Hmm. And it was a, it was a voodoo doll where you could enter someone's name. So I could enter your name on this voodoo doll and then I could stick it with a bunch of pins and mm. then you could mail it to the recipient saying that, you know, that they had been, um, they had voodoo applied to them. And so it was kind of this interesting play. Like I was going to make games, but you know, maybe they had this sort of like religious connotation. I don't know. It was, so it just stuck. <laughs> um, funnily enough, I had, when I was typing up the questions, um, I like got autocorrected with PlayStation the whole mm. time. It was just like not not accepting PlayStation at all. That's that's divine, <laughs> absolutely divine. So, what kind of legacy do you hope to leave um, with your work? Uh, who gives a shit? I don't think that's up for me to decide. Um, you know, I somebody oh. told me really early on, and you know that if uh, you have a foot in the past and a foot in the future, you're you're pissing on today. <laughs> um, so all I know is right now, and right now I'm talking with all of you lovely people. Um, I'm not concerned with the past and I'm certainly mm. not concerned with the future. You know, I just, mm. I feel like I have a finite amount of time on this planet and I've got a lot of really crazy ideas in my head. And mm. each day I wake up and I embrace that day to try to, you know, uh, transport myself and other people to some weird universe that I'm creating. So mm. legacy, that's I think for other people to de determine. I'm 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 not interested in in any of that. You are releasing, or you have already released um, three new pieces um, on Super Rare. Um, yeah. What's the inspiration behind these new pieces? Yeah. So um, you know, I, right now I'm 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 only on Super Rare and just trying to understand the space and the platform. And mm -hmm. so um, I, uh, you know, I know this is supposed to be 10 minutes. I'm going to try to make this quick, but, you know, okay. at, the be at the beginning of quarantine, like one of two things was going to happen. I was either going to install Animal Crossing and just like kiss my <laughs> life goodbye and just be yelling at Tom Nook for the next nine months and selling turnips, or I was going to try to, you know, not procrastinate. And, you know, I, you can't wake up in the morning and go, oh, you know, I, I wish I had time to learn, you know, Notch, or I wish I had the time to learn Touch Designer or Unreal Engine or GL. Like, it, it was like the ultimate motivator. That's kind of the silver lining mm -hmm. about this pandemic was, mm -hmm. was that, yes, you know, a lot of us were going through a really unfortunate time, but it was, a, it was an opportunity to, um, to, to learn something new and try something new. And so Absolutely. I, I've actually been in the crypto space for about three years and two months. I built an Ethereum miner because I had mm -hmm. a bunch of GPUs. And so I was actually mining Ethereum here in my, in my studio. And so I spent quarantine kind of coming up with this idea and you're, you're obviously seeing, uh, you know, some of it here, you know, on screen, which is, um, I have taken this code base that is audio reactive. You know, my mic is 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 not turned all the way up and I had to kind of reroute some cables. But um, I took all this code that I've been working on over the past couple of years and said, okay, well, you know, how do I work on this project where I can exclusively release things on Super Rare that is, you know, taking a culmination of kind of like you know, 25 years of experience 
and turn it into this project called the void. And mm. uh, the void, you'll notice it's got a zero and a one in rather than an O and an I, because it's it's digital. Mm. This is written in um, Java processing and GLSL shaders. And um, you know this this work requires uh, a collaboration with a musician. Mm. So um, the first pieces that I released was with a friend of mine, uh, Ben Lucas Boyson. Uh, the three that are up now are with um, a very good friend of mine, Zola Jesus. So I'm mm. trying to I'm trying to collaborate with people who are in the musician space that can create these sort of experiences sonically mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I then can tailor software around that says, hey, uh, I'm listening to the audio. I'm visualizing and interpreting what I think that audio mm -hmm. looks and feels like and and building these experiences. So the, the three that I just launched last night are with Zola Jesus. And um, it's it's just, it's um, super exciting for me because again, I'm, I'm taking like 25 years of work Mm. And collaborating with musicians where I do these 50-50 splits. I mean, we're all, you know, I'm so grateful for my collectors, um, Fast, uh, Tim Kang, now mm. Brandon, who I think is in the chat. You know, it's, it's, you know, we're all in a situation right now where, you know, we're able to sort of monetize our experience, strength and hope and, and have mm. people become patrons to this, to, to this work. So I'm, I'm super grateful for the people who are enjoying the work. I'm super grateful to collaborate with musicians who mm. are, you know, you know, we're, we're not partying at concerts anymore. So we're, it, this is for me, kind of like a holistic place to, to do these kind of collaborations. Um, and in the future, I'm doing a thing with a guy who's the guitarist for um, the Flaming Lips. Mm. I got a, a lot of really great things coming up uh, on the horizon. So I'm sorry that took so long. No but, worries. Um... Um, you, you did actually um, already answer my, my last question. So we're going to go for a question from the audience instead, which is yeah. from Brandon Kang Films. Brandon. And it says, what was the most fun and most challenging part of your recent collaboration with Zola? So, you know, uh, Zola uh, is an amazing person because she knows what she loves. She's got a mm. very clear vision. And so this is at the first time that we've collaborated. She um, um, did a concert here in New York at a space called Warsaw. And I just hit her up and I just said, um, I love you. I need you to love me. Um, <laughs> this is what I do. I do weird shit. And, you know, can I do visuals at your, at your, at your performance? And she was just like, fuck yes, let's, let's do this. And so, oh my gosh, I was not going to try to curse. I apologize. No worries. This um, and so, um, you know, she's got a really great clear vision and aesthetic. And so I think what becomes challenging when you work with collaborators is, is that, you know, we both have to benefit in some way. Like, mm. you know, I want to feel challenged sonically, but like, like I want to be able to meditate and listen to the music and just say, you know, well, you know, what do I think this uh, looks like aesthetically? Mm. And, you know, I'm listening to it sonically and I sort of have to interpret it uh, in a way. And, you know, I then have to turn that around mm. and give it back to Zola to say, you know, well, okay, you know, should should this be color or, you know, should this, should this be black and white, mm. you know? And so, so it becomes this sort of collaborative sort of push and pull where we're both a, a tr a trying to arrive at someplace magical, mm. um, but there's, there's compromise. And so I think, you know, the okay. challenging part is, is that you're working with a person who probably also has a very distinct, um, aesthetic and texture and you know for me that's exciting so it's challenging but it's also okay you know i'm trying to um possess the soul of another co-collaborator <laughs> sounds great but great question brandon thank you um so that's it that's all the questions and thank you so how did, much how did we do on how did we do on time <laughs> 19 minutes and 20 seconds Ooh. so a bit longer but it's fine it's yeah. completely fine thank you so um, much i hope everyone enjoyed you. it it was um, great thank it you was so really much great. and thank you to everyone who tuned in and make sure to tune in next week as well when untitled xyz will be joining us bye